Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be working with the Ender 3 Pro running Miguel's professional firmware. And I'm going to show you guys how to set linear advance. The reason why you want to set this properly is to clean up your corners as well as reduce stringing. Guys, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turn on your notification bell, and leave me some comments. I love reading the comments and do my best to get back to you guys as soon as I see them. All right, let's just jump right into it. All right, guys, so we're going to load up this model in Cura, and I'll make this available in the video description. And I want to give a special thanks to Doug O'Connor for documenting this process. Uh, we worked on this, and he put it all together in an organized fashion. I'll include this as well in the video description. So this is what we're going to need to set here. So once we load the model up, and there's two models. One is 18 millimeters tall, and the other one is 23 millimeters tall. The 18 millimeter tall model is for Bowden uh, setups, and the 23 millimeter model is for direct drive. So this machine that we're working on today is a Bowden tube. Uh, so we're going to use the shorter model. And once you load it up, we've got to make a few edits here to our Cura profile. So just uh, jump over to, let's start with quality. And we're going to set the uh, layer height to 0.4. And it's just the first one that you need to change. Uh, next thing that we're going to change is the wall line count. We need to set that to 1. Top and bottom layers. We're going to set to zero. Ink fill set to zero percent. And then uh, whatever your building material temperature and build plate temp needs to be, go ahead and set those. Speed, you want to have whatever your maximum print speed is going to be. So if you guys typically are uh, printing at 100 millimeters a second, go ahead and set that. Set your retraction distance and retraction speed. This is whatever you currently print with. You're not going to need any supports. Make sure to turn on build plate adhesion. And you need a minimum of uh, four line counts. Lastly, you want to make sure that under experimental, you have this thing set at middle. Once we're done with the profile settings, you want to come over here to the other side of uh, the Cura menu. Click on extensions. Select Post Processing, then Modify G-Code. And what we want to do here is add a script. The script that we're going to add is Insert at Layer Change. It's going to default to Before, that's OK. And under G-Code to Insert, type in M900 space K0. And close that. So now make sure that your script is running. So here it is. Once that's done, let's slice it. All right, and you want to save this to some place like your desktop because we're going to need to make some edits to it. So I already have it. I already have it here, so I'm not going to save it again. Let me show you what you need to do. Go ahead and open up a program like Notepad++. And open the G code file that we just uh, saved to the desktop. 
And what you want to do here is you want to do a search. So to initiate a search here, just uh, click anywhere on the document, control F, and you're going to type in M900. Click find next. And it's going to, it's going to find, you want to make sure you're at the top of the document before you start searching. So just get to the top of the document, find next, and it's going to find the first one, which is layer zero. On this one, we're not going to make any changes. So go ahead and click find next again. You're going to get layer one. Also layer one, we're not going to make any changes. Advance to the next one. The next one is going to be layer two. Now at layer two, if you're using a uh, Bowden tube, what we're going to need to do here is set the values to 0 0.025. And this is going to be our steps. And this is because we're using a Bowden tube. So our value needs to be uh, this number. And every layer that follows, we're going to increase by 0 0.025. So layer 2, we set 0 0.025. And then you can just scroll down here with the mouse. The next layer, 0 0.050, followed by 0 0.075 followed by 0 0.1 and and so on okay so we're just adding this 0 0.025 to the previous value and we're just going to continue that all the way till the very end the last one is going to be layer 45 you can see it here and it's going to have an ending value of 1.1 1 .1. okay once you're done here Go ahead and save this file to the desktop. You can rename it if you like, edited, or whatever name you want to give it. And then we're going to load that to the SD card. If you're using a direct drive, we would use the uh, second model, which is the 23 millimeter tall model. And we would set our layer value to 0 0.0125. Let's load up the model. And we call the linear advanced test square. There's the thumbnail and then just select print. All right, guys, the print is done. So let's uh, take it off the uh, build plate here. And one thing you want to check is to make sure that uh, on your printer, when you go over to control, and then motion that your K value now reads 1.1. If it does, that means that uh, you slice the part properly. And all right, if you if the value shows zero, then go back and check to make sure that you uh, you edited the the thing properly in Notepad plus plus. All right, so let's look at the model and see what we got. Let's pull the printer over here to the side. You're going to need a set of calipers for this. And what you want to look for here is, you can take the little brim off. What you want to look for here is this, this opening here. See that opening there? And you also want to look at it uh, in the light to see if you can see light through it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold it up to the light, see if I see light through it. All right, so for me, right where this, right where it's starting to open up, that will be the that will be the uh, the maximum amount of linear advance that I can have 
on this uh, on this printer. So what you're going to do next is you're going to take your calipers, set it to millimeters, and you're going to take a measurement. So I'm going to measure from the top of the model down to where it just opens up. And it looks like for me it's about 10 millimeters. Okay. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take 10 millimeters and divide it by my layer height. So 10 divided by 0.4 is 25. Okay, so I got 25 layers. Then take your original 44 layers and subtract 25. That gives us uh, 19 layers. Multiply 19 by 0 0.025 and that gives us a value of 0 0.475. So let's head back over to the printer and uh, set our advanced K to 0 0.475 and this would be the linear advance value for this particular printer. Alright so now let's uh, go ahead and, and uh, Print a test test piece. That way we can see how the linear advance looks around the corners. So if you look at this model, let's look at this model here for a second. You can see that that around the corners here. Let's find the let's find the one that's got the biggest the biggest hump on it here. Let's see. It's it looks like it's this one. So if you look carefully here at this at this corner here, see how there's kind of like a it's kind of hard to tell because it's black, but anyway, there's kind of like a buildup of material around the corner. And this happens because there is no there's no retraction, there's nothing to slow down the pressure of the filament while it goes around this turn. And uh the printhead is moving at whatever the maximum speed you set at. Till it hits this corner but then when it hits this corner it has to slow down to make the direction change but the extruder continues to to push filament uh through even around the corner uh so what the pressure advance does or linear advance does is it creates these mini retractions every time it comes across uh like a corner or a uh Or, so, or something like this, like a curve, it'll 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 give like a quick little snap back, and you can tell when you're watching it print. Okay, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to print with the current pressure advance setting that we just determined. That way we can see what it looks like compared to one uh, that was printed without any pressure advance at all. So let's run that real quick. All right, so let's get this one off. This is the one with pressure advance on. Now we're gonna print another one with no pressure advance and compare the two. Alright, so this one is the reference piece with no pressure advance. Let's get this thing off of here. So let's get in closer so we can see what we're doing here. Okay. So you're going to notice a difference with the uh, pressure advance or linear advance is is with these is with the corners so um you can see that over here you got like a like a like a bump around the corners you can see it from this angle a little bit see a little extra material deposited there around the corners so around all the corners you're going to have that 
that little extra bit of material. And in addition to lo looking ugly uh, with with the corners uh, being bulged out like that, is uh, it al also that extra material winds up being deposited on the the edges of the nozzle. And as it, as the print progresses, it continues to build up a little bit more material, a little bit more material, a little bit more material, all around the edges of the nozzle, because it can't deposit it all when it goes around these corners. Uh, as you can imagine, you got the pressure is is the same, consistent from here all the way to the end, and then all of a sudden there's a sudden direction change. Well, the pressure is still on that material that's inside the Bowden tube. And it deposits on the on the outside of this uh, corner, along with on the edge of the nozzle, and it just continues to go as the print progresses. All right, so now let's look at let's look at the one with the pressure advance on. Okay, so this one's got pressure advance on, and you can see that the corner doesn't have all that material deposited on. Let's compare it to the uh, to this one. Yeah, this one has more material deposit around the corner compared to this one. You can see it here real good. All right, and let's look at it on this side. See that? See that distortion of the light right there? This one doesn't have that distortion. All, all the corners are going to be the same. All right, guys, so that wraps up this video. Now you guys know how to set up your linear advance in uh, Miguel's professional firmware. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turn on your notification bell, and leave me some comments. I love reading the comments and do my best to get back to you guys as soon as I see them. All right, guys, till the next one. Take care.